I think maybe we can get started. So, uh, how many of you attended my talk at Santa Clara uh, last Cloud Foundry Summit? Okay, good. Um, there will be uh, some kind of, you know, um, some repeated messages, but looks like um, all of you are um, brand new here, and yeah, you were not there. So, um, again, my name is uh, Surya Dugurala. Um, I'm from IBM, um, mainly responsible for uh, uh, the IBM Cloud Performance Engineering, I chair that guild. Um, and uh, uh, today, um, unfortunately, I couldn't get um, you know, Mellorod uh, with me on the stage. Um, he couldn't come because of some conflict. Um, so today, we're going to talk about um, uh, how Cloud Foundry at scale works um, you know, with, uh, in the banking sector. Um, I'm fortunate to work very closely um, with the Royal Bank of Canada uh, on their journey uh, to uh, you know, bring some of their key workloads to Cloud Foundry. And the journey was not that fun uh, because it had, we had uh, our own fair share of uh, prop uh, you know, problems um, because uh, the requirements of scalability and uh, we really put Cloud Foundry to test. Um, so I'm going to share um, our observations and you know, where we started, um, how our journey was, um, and what are uh, some of our um, you know, successes and uh, uh, things that we have identified actually, um, you know, that are actually making uh, the Cloud Foundry better as well. Um, so first of all, uh, how many of you know about what an RBC, Royal Bank of Canada, as a bank? I think, yeah, a few. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, um, the RBC, about RBC and uh, RBC's goals uh, for cloud adoption. Um, I'm the uh, cloud lab advocate from IBM um, working closely uh, with all lines of business um, at RBC. So um, I pretty closely work with uh, both technical and um, um, the management uh, folks there. So I'll share some of the goals for cloud adoption. And uh, some of the key uh, applications that uh, RBC has actually deployed and running in production right now, um, of course, on uh, Cloud Foundry with uh, Bluemix, um, what benefits uh, RBC got. Uh, and also, um, I will talk a little bit about uh, some of the engineering work um, that went in. And then, in fact, I will, uh, um, this morning, as you might have seen, about the go router uh, changes. and. Actually, those design changes in action, uh, I can show you here uh, with some of the RBC's um, online banking applications. So RBC, uh, Royal Bank of Canada, is uh, a Canada's is largest bank, not only Canada's, but also uh, they have a global footprint. Um, one of the North America's leading diversified financial company. Um, it has um, both personal, commercial banking, uh, wealth management, insurance, corporate and investment banking. Um, they have almost uh, 80,000 uh, employees, and uh, they serve uh, more than 16 million customers, both personal, commercial, and uh, you know, uh, small business as well. Um, again, um, they are uh, operating in, um, not only in Canada, but around uh, 42 countries um, in the world. So when we started this journey with Cloud Foundry uh, at RBC back in 2015, um, the goal has been, like, you know, if you look at uh, from a strategic uh, goal point of view, um, there are multiple lines of business. Like you have a business unit, uh, each business unit has its own strategic goal. Um, when it comes to the, the personal and commercial banking or wealth management, so there is a group um, called Technology and Operations. Um, they look at uh, the LOB's specific goals uh, from a business standpoint, and then how we can actually translate them into the technology. And uh, one of the main things there um, from a, a T&O strategic uh, point of view, so how can we get uh, the business um, you know, specialty? Uh, the, the main thing is about uh, how we can increase the, accelerate the capability. Uh, previously, you know, they used to, even a small change, if they have to make it in, in one of the uh, panels or one of the functions, um, it used to stay, take months, right? So one of the, how can you accelerate 
you know, those, those are you know, one of the main things. Um, and also the innovation uh, from a cloud and big data point of view. Um, technology platforms, uh, how can we um, embrace the new technologies? And uh, because they're already uh, running lots and lots of um, applications um, on traditional um, you know, data centers um, with uh, middleware like WebSphere. And um, of course, they have the data in mainframe. And how can we um, you know, get into the cloud and uh, without disrupting, at the same time, um, how, can I, how can I do the digital transformation uh, seamless? Um, that was the main um, goal there. Um, when you look at uh, the business financial services portfolio, right? um, if you look at the client and user segment, um, you can clearly see the commercial clients, the small business clients, and uh, um, of course, the, you, know, you have RBC employees also. So those are uh, the client and user segment perspective. How can we impact them? Um, from a digital uh, channels and services point of view, um, you can clearly see we, we have uh, divided this whole work into three different things. Uh, one is the online banking. Online banking is the early adopters of cloud. Um, I'll be talking about uh, you know, some of the POC and then ultimately that went into the production. Um, if you're an RBC customer now, if you're going and actually looking at your account summary, you are using Cloud Foundry right now. And uh, if you're doing some bill payments, like for instance, like you know, multi-bill pay, multi -bill pay and, uh, you are using Cloud Foundry. Um, so that is from an online uh, banking perspective, retail online banking. Uh, but also uh, from a digital uh, business channels point of view, when you talk about commercial banking right, uh, and wealth management, you know, like some of those areas also, um, you know, you, we have um, you know, some of the existing applications. Um, it has been a tough uh, thing because um, a typical industry problem, like all of you may be experiencing, um, how can I get my monolithic a large monolithic application, and then get to the microservices, and also how can I go from a data um, on-premise data center to cloud? Right? Those are the typical problems, like all of um, you know you have uh, from a customer point of view. Um, we went through that journey here. That's what I'm going to uh, talk about here. Some uh, so from a digit, digital uh, you know business channel cloud strategic point of view, so the main issue was um, you know some of the applications that are running in traditional web sphere, um, because uh, the main challenge was um, already you're up for migration because you're running on an older version of uh, the middleware. And uh, you have two options. You either migrate to the latest and uh, you know, stay there on-premise, on, uh, on or take this opportunity and migrate some of uh, the applications uh, to Liberty on local, and then transition that into the build pack, like Java build pack, Liberty build pack in Cloud Foundry. Um, that is one of the route um, that we took um, here. Um, and then when we talk about the enablement uh, roadmap, um, in three stages we are actually trying to do. Uh, we wanted to avoid the full big bang um, migration, uh, which of course you will be setting yourself up for failure. Um, so I'll give you an example of a commercial banking application where you have um, one monolithic application uh, doing almost 19 different business functions. Um, how can I get uh, in an ideal world, um, you will actually uh, divide that 19, and we would like to have those 19 different microservices. Um, so what we started doing was, you know, take maybe one of the edges in one of the scenarios, um, and then um, you know migrate that uh, to to uh, microservices, and um, again, you know, get that to the cloud. So when we are doing that. Um, one of the, the main things that um, you know, we did was the online banking POC application. But before I get into the details of the, the online banking, retail online banking POC, um, right now uh, there are 30 applications uh, in production on Bluemix Cloud Foundry uh, platform, 
Um, and there are some of these retail online banking that are rolled out to around 6 million customers. The retail customers um, it has gone out to. And uh, some of the other key applications uh, that are running on Cloud Foundry uh, that include uh, um, the portfolio risk management, RBC Rewards Mobile, uh, Merchant Banking, Finance Core Technology, and you know, my advisor, uh, like some of the wealth management functions. So as you can see, um, this is actually um, cutting across many lines of business. So this clearly talks about um, um, how uh, Cloud Foundry um, is actually being used um, with a banking sector, um, RBC being the, almost you know, at the top of um, uh, the big banks there. And the journey, uh, as I said, it's not, um, you know, when we started this, the challenge was, can the Cloud Foundry uh, meet the bank's requirements of like around 300 to uh, 400 transactions per second under subsection response time? That was the ask uh, for the um, retail online backing. Um, when we started this, um, we were at around like 10 to 12 transactions per second. Um, with um, you know like almost 15 to 20 seconds response time, so we were nowhere close, and uh, we were not able to uh, even scale. Right um, from that journey, um, we have uh, come to um, you know when, before we went to the production, we were able to showcase almost 800 to 900 uh, transactions per second um, at around uh, seven to 800 millisecond response time. Um, so that journey was an uh, arduous journey. Uh, it was not easy. Um, we, we found many issues, um, but before I get into the issues, um, what exactly we were trying to do in this POC? So when you talk about online retail banking application, it has multiple things, right? You know, it has um, a GUI piece, like um, we tried to uh, redesign and re-architect that with AngularJS. Um, and then we have a security piece and a services piece. So security, um, we were using Trust Association Interceptor for authentication before, TAI. Um, we brought in that same authentication and actually we packaged it up uh, with them. Um, so we divided this whole application into two Java applications, an orchestrator piece and a stub. So Orchestrator is actually uh, simulating the GUI and um, also the security pieces. And the stub application um, is actually a, a simulation of the backend service interaction. Because data has to come from the mainframe. Um, so we are simulating that. So these are the two Java applications that we have actually deployed in Liberty Build Pack in, um, in Cloud Foundry. Um, when we try to scale that, um, that's where um, we saw uh, many issues there. Um, the first one is we had some, uh, we learned that GoRouter has a scalability limitation as you try to scale. Um, I'm glad um, because I have been you know, pushing for that for a long time. I'm glad that that um, happened. I'll, go, I'll be showing some data later today. Um, so that's one. And then we also found out um, that there are uh, some Algorithms in the runtimes, uh, they may not be agile enough when you try to push uh, to a large scale workload. Um, they all worked great before um, in the on premise world, uh, but when we went uh, to the cloud um, where you have the back end services, the latency of the back end service, uh, if it is really high, then some of these autonomic algorithms started failing. Um, they are not um, really working to expand the pool to accommodate the, the large-scale workload. So some of those things uh, we have identified and uh, we fixed. Um, not only that, we also had um, some issues with um, security vulnerability, for instance, the, the security vulnerability scanning that we do for um, you know, keep making sure that you know, no rogue application is actually um, you know, uh, crept in and all those things um, you know, we had to a little bit work through and optimize um, to, to make sure that, you know, we have. Uh, another thing that um, we have seen um, is um, the build pack mechanism 
uh, I'm glad you know, I'm working with Jules um, on, on some of these things. Um, what is happening is on the build pack, especially on the Java side, um, when you try to push an app, um, if you, mainly in Java, what does uh, happen is actually you will have a lot of CPU-intensive operations. Um, if you have a lot of artifacts that you actually um, you know, um, push that into a droplet, um, and then uh, when you're pushing it, there will be a significant CPU spike. Uh, that's because of the ZZIP operations, and those things are very heavy and CPU-intensive. So we are trying to um, work uh, to change that, um, the way the current flat file system, to a layered file system, like Docker, um, which will reduce the droplet size, and which in turn will reduce the CPU usage that is required for doing these you know, zip operations and you know, tar and tar and all those things. So some of those things are you know, going to be useful for you know, everybody, and it will help Cloud Foundry as it is. And uh, we also uh, wanted, uh, bank wanted to make sure that you know, when you're running at this scale, can the Cloud Foundry platform stay there for you know, a massive workload running for 12 to 24 hours? Um, you know, that's another requirement that we were able to um, look at the endurance and the, and the resiliency of the platform uh, with auto scaling, right? You know, can um, the, the application scale um, automatically uh, with the uh, auto scale, and we demonstrated that as well. So, um, as, you, as I was <coughs> telling, right, and we have 800 to 900 transactions per second, but we were stuck at 8 to 900, uh, mainly because uh, once you reach that level, um, the good order not having the keep alive um, is actually getting to us for scalability. So um, I will share some data, but um, now um, with that change that uh, was made up into, into to the Cloud Foundry, um, now we're able to cross that boundary of 800, 900, and we're able to go to 200, to, sorry, 2,000 transactions per second. So that's a very good change, uh, as um, you know, in the keynote, uh, you're talking about three times uh, improvement. We can actually see that th three times improvement um, in a real um, application. Um, the way uh, it was used um, is actually RBC has two different environments. Uh, one is the um, local, um, that's uh, Bluemix local with Cloud Foundry. Uh, that's where the production is. And uh, uh, for a dev and um, test, they have a dedicated instance of Cloud Foundry um, where you know, developers will have access and develop their application and then promote it to, to local um, for um, you know, deployment and production. Uh, these local, they have two local instances uh, for HA, uh, and then they are actually connected to uh, the, um, the backend mainframe um, uh, via uh, data power, right, you know, for an encrypted channel there. Um, and uh, one thing that uh, they wanted to, um, you know, go further, right? When when we talk about uh, uh, the next steps, what exactly we want to do uh, now that we have this RBC working scaling um, in Cloud Foundry, in production. So they took something called the RBC Express or a, a commercial banking kind of a thing where uh, you have a traditional web sphere and traditional middleware and they wanted to you know, um, you know, change that um, into um, the you know, a Liberty Build Pack. Uh, so those are some of the things that um, we have completed the first two phases. Um, we demonstrated and some of those things and uh, the next in line will be the RBC um, Express. So what are the benefits that um, RBC realized um, of actually uh, you know, getting to this cloud journey with Cloud Foundry? Um, there is accelerated time to market, uh, including return on investment, right? You know, um, if you want to, to get some kind of a changes, any small change in the GUI or something, um, which used to take um, a lot of time, and now we're actually able to get that. Um, and again, uh, directly aligned with the DBC Scaled Agile, um, uh, they have the operating model um, to, so now um, with the adoption to Cloud Foundry, uh, they're able to directly align um, the, the cloud uh, goals and strat strategic direction too, to, to the um, you know, Scaled Agile operating model. 
Um, of course, the, it enables the common services. When we talk about, uh, they have almost like 400 or 500 different business um, level APIs. Um, they're all business layer. Um, so uh, the goal here is how we can actually exploit those four or 500 APIs. Uh, any application, any, 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 any LOB, uh, they'll be able to um, you know, get uh, to those APIs, and you can actually expose those um, as, as microservices. Right? That, that, that is the direction. Uh, of course, we have improved efficiency through you know, uh, QE and DevOps operations. Uh, there is a DevOps pipeline um, and also the, um, the, the monitoring um, layer, um, right? You know, integrating the existing, um, some of the monitoring stuff um, with uh, the, the, the dashboard for uh, Cloud Foundry. Um, of course, the reduced cost of operations um, because of the elastic provisioning, um, the auto scaling that um, is happening there. Um, from a metrics point of view, uh, you can see the quality and production resiliency, some of the metrics. Uh, so it used to be like kind of uh, 18 months um, from between releases. Uh, now, uh, actually, it has come down to days, if not some of them in hours, right? So that, that's the big one. And then there's a 41% improvement um, in quality in development projects. And uh, there is a 90%, um, you know, lowers the, you know, uh, the, the, the defects that we have, um, the arrival rate of the defects um, is reduced by almost 90%. Um, digital business banking achievements, some of those things that uh, the LOBs, um, um, like you can clearly see there are eight microservices. This is from a digital business channel uh, LOB point of view. Um, they got eight of um, those microservices with stable operating, um, stable operation in, in, in production. So that is the DBCs because you have, you have this online retail banking uh, that's a separate LOB, and then you have a digital uh, business channel um, uh, with uh, commercial banking that's a separate one. Um, and we have, uh, you know, successfully migrated uh, from existing legacy. Um, monolithic applications, um, and uh, you know, we, we guard them, some of them into um, uh, the, the production also. Some of them are still at POC level. Right. Uh, again, uh, we have identified many, many areas uh, for uh, uh, you know, both from the way the applications, uh, from an application architecture and uh, development point of view also, uh, being the you know, first time we are actually going from on-premise to, like some of those things will be like using the sticky sessions. We learned the hard way. Uh, when you have, uh, you are bringing an application from an on-premise world and uh, with, uh, with the traditional web sphere and middleware, um, you get some of those problems um, because we were, finding why we are not able to scale, um, why the auto scale is not working. Um, because when we enabled the auto scale, um, the, the traffic was not getting spread into multiple instances. Even though auto scale, based on the policy, it will provision a new instance, but the traffic is sticking to the first instance. That's mainly because you had a sticky session. So when you have a sticky session, um, the auto scale, uh, you cannot really um, you know, spray that to the multiple uh, dynamically provisioned instances. So some of those things we have um, you know, found the hard way. Um, from a Cloud Foundry uh, engineering point of view, as uh, I have uh, mentioned um, previously, um, we had um, some of the go router uh, things. That was a big one. Um, I will show you uh, the, the, this is the chart. This is the Grafana chart. You can see uh, that's before the go router um, design change on the top one. And then uh, the bottom one um, is the one with the go router enabling the keep alives and uh, setting it and configuring it uh, correctly. Um, you can see that uh, once you reach like seven or 800 there, um, you can't really push anything. Even though you have enough resources in the Diego cells, um, you, know, you are uh, stuck in the front door um, you know, pushing your traffic. Only thing that will go up um, is the latency and the response time. Um, you can't really um, increase. But you, know, you can see here, um, this is not a, a limitation yet, because you can see the 1,500 to 2,000 here. 
Um, this is not a limitation. Uh, we are in the process of actually um, you know, scaling out. Um, you need to make sure uh, the good router, uh, by default, it's there in uh, CF 253 and uh, um, above. Um, you can go to 270, you will, you will get that. Um, uh, by default, the key for live uh, for go router is disabled. So if you want to enable it, um, you need to uh, change the manifest and redeploy your go routers. And you need to make sure uh, that uh, you have um, the right keep alive connections. Uh, because keep alive um, has a side effect also. If you increase the number of connections, uh, what happens is you, know, you may end up having um, less number of file descriptors. You may be having a problem um, with that, and that will impact the stability. So you have to make sure, as a cloud provider, we have to make sure uh, that we have uh, the right configuration set for good order um, to get the, the scalability. Uh, at the same time, um, we want to make sure uh, that we are not destabilizing uh, the, the Cloud Foundry platform, right? So uh, that's why you can see there, um, you know, we have uh, gone up to like 1,700. Uh, we are in the process of actually uh, finding that sweet spot. Um, I think the maximum allowed is like 50,000 uh, based on the OS that you use. Um, but, you know, you need to keep some of the file descriptors for other things. So um, you can't go up to 50,000. But, you know, um, the numbers that you are seeing is with our... Uh, Keep alive connections set to 5,000. So, so that's one thing. And uh, another thing that uh, we want to, uh, you know, like hopefully uh, coming pretty soon, um, which will impact the Cloud Foundry um, operating system, like, uh, the whole Cloud Foundry platform, um, is the uh, mainly for Java because we compared that with Java and other runtimes too. But the CPU spikes are happening mainly in the Java runtime. Whether it is Liberty or Tomcat, you know you can clearly see five times, sometimes you know 200 to 300 percent CPU spikes when you're pushing an app. Um, if you have so many applications and uh, you have a dense cell, you can understand how that's going to impact the other applications. Um, you know, taking the uh, CPU from those other applications. Um, so that is actually uh, Jules and uh, the CF uh, team is actually working actively to um, uh, redesign the build pack mechanism. Um, once we get that, you know, that will be, again, a step in the right direction to, to stabilize the Cloud Foundry um, and reduce these CPU spikes. So um, with that, you know, I do have um, you know, some of the, um, the case study in detail. Um, I had a, um, I have written a blog, and also there is one uh, nice. Uh, if you Google, I think maybe you can see um, there is one nice article from a third party um, that describes uh, the whole um, journey of RBC with uh, Cloud Foundry. Um, so, with that, um, I have any questions I can take? Okay, how, the question is, uh, how did you manage the backend um, service integration? Um, in this case, uh, for online banking and other digital channels that we have used, um, we have mainly um, you know, directly used the mainframe to get the data uh, using the data power. So we have used the tunnel and we have done that. Um, we haven't used um, any other um, public services, uh, for instance, um, maybe Compose or any other. We haven't used that yet. Um, but we have directly interacted with the mainframe um, using the, uh, the data power. Okay, uh, so the question is how long it took for the Sprint Zero and then from that point to production, right? Uh, Sprint Zero, um, I got engaged um, last year sometime in um, April uh, time frame. Um, uh, it took around like two to three months for Sprint Zero. 
And from that point, um, we have uh, you know, slowly uh, gotten into the production. Uh, those 30 that you're talking about, you know, it took some time. Right? We haven't uh, promoted all those things into uh, production, um, but it may be a like, few, mo few more months to get to that 30 in production. Any more questions? If not, uh, thank you. <laughs>